In this video, I will be guiding you through on how to speedrun the Keo Perico heist from start to finish in under 30 minutes. I'll show you the fastest way to complete the Gather Intel mission, all the relevant preps, and what to do in the finale, as well as what not to do in order to save you time. Who am I? I'm just some guy that's had multiple world records in completing the Keo Perico heist, including both 4 player and 3 player records, as well as completing it solo in under 4 minutes. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing you need to do before you start is to make sure you have full snacks and full body armour. Fast travel your Kasatka submarine to Chumash and park it right here on the beach underneath the large bridge by Zancudo military base. You then want to chuck down 4 sticky bombs at these 4 locations. Start up your heist and off we go. Captain, I think Mr. Rubio must be missing us, yes? Shall we see how he is getting on? The Vellum spawn locations are entirely random. If you're lucky, you'll get Lego Zancudo. As soon as you're outside, detonate your sticky bombs and then shoot the guy next to the plane. So, a multi-million dollar question. What impulsive purchase did Mr. Rubio make after we robbed him last time? <laughs> and will he ever learn? I think not. We use our usual entry point for reconnaissance. Light aircraft used by Mr. Rubio's smuggler teams. I have tracked such a plane on its most recent visit to Los Santos. Coordinates are with you now. You have got the plane? Good. Now, fly south. Then keep flying south until you hear the sound of the angry blonde Colombian on Trabago Beach. The best way to get some height in the plane is by using the left and right triggers on your controller and tilting the plane like this. It will enable the plane to climb much higher, faster. The general rule when flying is the higher you are, the faster you will go due to there being less air resistance. Another tip on this plane is to dab the left analogue stick to gradually gain height, which also gives you a speed boost as shown here on the speedometer. Then just make sure you stay above the clouds for extra speed. By doing the mission this way, from the second you press the button to gather intel to when you hit the yellow checkpoint, will be done in just 3 minutes 50 seconds. However, this approach should only be done if you're going for some kind of speed run record as you're more likely to get one of the other 4 Vellum locations. If that is the case, then simply fast travel and take your sparrow. By taking the fast travel route, Lego Zancudo to Keo Perico would take 5 minutes and 10 seconds. Fast travelling to one of the grapeseed locations will take 5 minutes and 20 seconds. Fast travelling to Palato Cove will take 5 minutes and 30 seconds. And the furthest location, Procopio Beach, will take 6 minutes and 10 seconds. Paring, esperen ahí. Why can't you assholes be on time for once, eh? Arms out, let's go. Okay, wait over there. They will bring it soon. Go on. Now on to the island. As soon as you can, run to the Manchester bike in front of you and follow this route. My rule in the first part is to follow the pink flowers. They will know something is not right. Safest thing is to stay out of sight. You want to hit this pink flower here and then wheelie up this hill. Over this part of the terrain is very bumpy, so sporadic light wheelies will keep your speed up but without the risk of falling off. Head to the second pink flower here and the third one here. Hit this ramp but slightly to the right to avoid the big trees on the left. Wheelie up this big jump here, but maybe not too hard because sometimes it can throw you off to the left and into the water. If you've done this bit fast enough, you should be ahead of the jeep approaching on the right. And if you notice a guard looking our direction on the minimap just to the left, it means that there will not be a guard at the tower and the signal box will be at ground level. Downstairs, you will need to look around. 
The hacking mini game is just simple maths. Each symbol equates to a multiplication. The square of the line through it means times one and X means times 10. Nine times 10 is 90, eight times 10 is 80, and five times one is five. Add them all up and you get 175. Let's look at another example. The target is 84. Four times 10 is 40. The two vertical lines means times two. So two times two is four. Add the number 40 and that's 84. Okay, they have access. The app is on your phone. Let us take a look. When viewing the CCTV cameras, keep spamming right on the D-pad until you come to the fourth camera. Let's have a look in the vault room. When here, hold left on your thumbstick to turn the camera. As soon as you have identified the target, go to your pause menu, online, and then creator. When you've loaded into the creator, go to online, GTA online, and invite only session. This can save you about a minute compared to dying or being spotted on the island and getting the plane back to Los Santos. It also means that you will spawn in your Kasatka, assuming you've set this as your spawn location and in the perfect place to start the first prep. Arriving at the island, scoping out and back to your planning board in just 4 minutes and 30 seconds. The first prep you want to do is the weapons. The number one reason for this is that if you get the horrendous and very long Meriwether mission, you simply go to your missile launcher and blow up the Valkyries from here. And because we've now spawned at Elysian Island, we'll only lose you about 30 seconds. Unless of course you get the multiple times, which is actually annoyingly likely. Blowing up the Valkyrie all these times is still faster than actually completing the mission. Eventually, if you didn't already get it, you'll get one of three other missions. They are the same mission, but just in three different locations. For this one, you want to hop into your Sparrow. Now you want to open up your Interactions menu and return your Kasatka to storage. But then call in your Oppressor Mark II and use it from here. And obviously, the fastest way to call it in is by registering as an MC President and obtaining it via the Interactions menu. Now make sure you land on the roof and enter from there. There will be quiet option near roof. Either way, there will be tough and bloody skirmish on the inside. Once you're in, headshot this guard from outside the first set of doors, so the guard on the right can't see. Regular weapon. Then these two, right guard first. I probably kept in hidden gun locker somewhere. Then this one by the desk. Do it quick enough and nobody will notice. The tactic I use for this hack is to look for two numbers at the front or back that stand out. In this case, I'm looking for 85 next to 58. Once you have the weapons, just run back to the lift and press left on the D-pad to exit onto the roof. I learned my lesson. Nothing personal. Once back in your oppressor, head towards Vespucci Beach and then call in your Kasatka. Everything new. Everything clean. And flying low to the ground or the sea will give you a minor speed boost. When landing your oppressor, make sure it's on the flat surface and not at all tilting. Any tilt will mean it will not be there when you next exit the sub and it will cost you 10 Gs to get back. 
Weapons mission complete in just 4 minutes. The second prep you want to do is the plasma cutter. Again, it will be one of three locations, but all relatively close to the city centre. If we are going to get into Mr. Rubio's bulletproof display case without breaking what's inside, we will need very specialised tools. Park up your Mark II and go in. You know, Captain, from the... Once in, run forward slightly and face the direction of the planning board before quickly bringing up your phone and taking a photo, then spam square if on PlayStation, and then X to send the photo to Pavel. While doing this, head to the door to hit the checkpoint to exit. Nobody home? Hmm. Perhaps they have started the job sooner than it is. The next location from here will be either two places at Rockton Hills or Del Perro. Something I can cross-reference. All I need is a photograph. On the way, make sure you have full health and armor. Now blow everyone up, making sure you also hit the yellow checkpoint. Grab the goods and down. Make sure you park your Mark II neatly and mission complete in just 3 minutes. Next up is the fingerprint cloner. Again it would be one of 3 locations normally starting on the outskirts of the city to the east. While en route, make sure you stock up on health and armour. There are two ways to approach this, but my preferred method is to go in guns blazing. As you can see, the difference in approach time is negligible, as seen in this comparison, if you decide to turn off the cameras. The archive will be at one of three locations, with the best one being at Del Perro. Ignore the cameras and park up. There will be more CCTV here. The failsafe tool will be small guard with circuit board and antennae. When inside, look for a glistening on the two tables ahead. If there isn't any, the code will be on the table to the left. I think private security will be on their way. Fingerprint cloner done in 4 minutes 30. Yes. Prep 4 is the cutting torch. As always, it's one of three locations. Two of them are good, one of them isn't. One of the good locations is on top of this skyscraper. Blow everyone up and search the six toolboxes scattered around the place. This one is the Rubio's Island, yes. Or perhaps you practice art of disguise. You wear hard hat in these places. No one has questions. <gasps> the torch will not just be lying around. You will need to search toolboxes and so on. Ah, from the sound of it, the guards have found it, yes. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll have more luck when evading Mr. Rubio's private army. Come on, dude. 
keep looking until you see the bright blue cutting torch. Collect it and return to sub. Do you have it? Bring it back for safekeeping. The only way to be safe, not sorry, yes. We leave behind a single piece of the jigsaw. All done in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. If you do get the bad cutting torch location, the same rules apply, it's just harder to navigate around the site. And the final prep is the approach vehicle, and you want to select the long fin boat. Again, it will be one of three locations to start with, but all ending up at the same place. Be sure to have purchased the Phantom Wedge at just under 2 million and fully upgrade it. Return your oppressor to storage and call in the wedge via the interaction menu. The Mesa police station is the trickiest one to navigate. But reverse up to the trailer, hook it up. And then head towards the Legion Island. While en route, put your Kasatka back into storage. Then request your Kasaika again when you're approaching the drop-off point. So, Captain, you will do the final stage of this operation alone, or will you bring accomplices? Yes, you must split the profit, but there is more likely to be profit, and there will be more of you to carry more of it. Park up your Phantom Wedge here. Then get out, run away, and blow yourself up to lose the cops. You will then spawn somewhere within a 50 meter radius, sometimes behind fences. I used the atomizer for a quick escape. Simply get back into the Phantom Wedge and trigger the cutscene. Now run to the road, return the phantom via the MC function, turn left and call in your oppressor. Doing this will mean it spawns right behind you. Because you had previously called in your Kasatka, it's now conveniently parked close by. Approach vehicle sourced and back to the sub in 4 minutes 30. Those 5 preps are all you need in order to start the heist finale, unless your target is the bearer bonds, in which case you won't have the plasma cutter but you will need the safe codes. If that is the case, leave these till last. I will send you a photograph of the man you are looking for. For this one, landing on the roof of the casino and entering this way will save you a small walk to the elevator before the cutscene.
I suggest running to the left first. Now you'll need to find his suite. It will not be so difficult. Look for the trained killer standing outside. And then back around if the guards are not there. Equip a silenced weapon and headshot both in quick succession. Excellent. The job's so quiet, the element of surprise is still yours. Be sure to unequip your weapon before going inside. With your weapon unequipped, you'll be free to walk around. Check out the bedroom on the right first. You have the photograph I sent you, yes? Then the office by the lounge. And finally the bar area. Where's my money, motherfucker? When you found him, kill all necessary guards and grab the safe codes. If you're doing this solo, kill yourself as fast as possible. You will then spawn way outside the casino, but the prep is complete. Do a quick outfit change to force the game to save and then use the creator trick to get back to the Kasatka faster. The safe codes is the slowest prep, taking 5 minutes. With all the preps complete, it's now time for the finale. When you get to the main planning screen, just tick every first option. Don't forget to equip your suppressors. The two fastest ways into the compound are either the long fin boat jump or if you're playing on normal mode and have an extra life, you can explode yourself at this location. You will then spawn right in the middle of the compound. Also, dying on normal mode will not affect your elite challenge criteria. If you are on hard mode, the best way is the long fin jump. Take a tight right until you're facing away from land, then a tight left and head towards the smaller of the two rocks just to the right, just here. Now head towards the right side of the compound where there will be three guards. Depending on RNG, one of these may have the door code to be able to get in. If they do, pick them up and get into first person view before triggering entry. If they don't, it could be one of another six guards. So to save time, cut your losses and head down to the drainage tunnel. If you got the door codes, head right, headshot this guard, and hop over the wall. If you're lucky, you can get the gate keys from him. Now head straight down here, ignoring the guard to the right, and hop this wall, then this wall, and unlock the gate. If you came from the drainage tunnel, turn left at the stairs to the pool, and take out these two guards, one of which may be carrying the gate key. If it's not one of these guards, it will be either this guard walking around underneath the camera or one of the other two guards with the red vision cones located around the central office. Once in the basement, you now have to do the fingerprint hack. 
Normal mode is one fingerprint, hard mode is two. Do you have a fingerprint scan here too? Alright, we follow the usual plan. Cycle through the partial prints to match the target print. I've slowed this down to help me try and talk you through how I do it. The best way is to start at the top and call this fingerprint tip segment 1 in row 1. Now go down the list starting at segment 1 and pressing right to segment 2. Now down to row 3, again starting at segment 1, hitting right twice to get to section 3. Then just keep repeating this tactic until the fingerprint is complete. Cycle through the partial prints to match the target print. The benefit of first person mode is how it makes it easier to navigate the tight corridors but also to go up and down the stairs faster. To crack the safe, just keep repeating the safe code over and over again out loud. 33, 2, 74, 33, 2, 74, 33, 2, 74, 33, 2, 74. The low numbers go up. We have the combination. Just take your time. And the high numbers go down. If, however, you had a target in the glass cabinet, fire up your plasma cutter almost to the end and then release. Once it has cooled down to around 10%, then fire it back up. Four hits and you're in. Use your aiming function in order to strafe and navigate tricky spots, and jump down these stairs. Head up close to this light beige pillar and hop the wall. You don't need to go all the way to the gate to trigger the exit, you can just stand here. Take out this guard and steal his bike. You need to take this very specific route in order to line yourself up for the jump. Start wheeling through this gap with the palm tree to your left and pull back on your controller for maximum distance. Press left on your D-pad to equip the retriever and swim to the middle of these three sea lines. This specific spot will have you escape in the island within seconds. As soon as the writing has disappeared from the bottom of the screen, you're free to do what you like until the screen fades to black. By doing the heist this way, I've managed to complete the finale in just 3 minutes 50. All in all, you should now be able to complete the entire Keio Perico heist within 30 minutes. If you'd like some extra one-to-one -one help with this heist, I do just that in my regular live streams. So if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting that like button and good luck with your speed runs. I'm Beatsdown and I'll see you soon.